What's going on everyone? This is Freddy from AWOL Studios and today I'm going to show you how to create a event where a character interacts with something like fire. The fire is cast onto the enemy. The enemy takes damage. If in that zone too long, the player dies. So let's just kind of jump into it. So first thing you want to do is you just want to create a blueprint and you just want to create an actor. So obviously blueprint and just create an actor, okay? And then we'll get right into it here. So right now my viewport is empty. You need two simple things. Uh, box collision. And add a particle system. Now you guys can use this for electricity. You can use it for fire, um, steam, whatever you want. Just change the particle system to actually match what you're trying to do. Let me bring this back over here a little bit. So the uh, particle will use um, everybody that's using it should have the P underscore fire, which was part of the uh, free pack for the starter content. And you're just going to add it there. Okay. We're just going to compile. Before we go into event graph, we're going to make one variable, which will be a Boolean. And I'm going to call it like player and radius with a question mark. Just going to compile it again. And we're going to go right into the event graph. So the first thing is anything that's here, you can clear completely off. You don't need any of that. We're going to start by clicking the box, which will be your collision box. We're going to scroll down. And we are going to be using the begin overlap and the end overlap. So let's start with the begin. And while we're here, let's just add the um, end overlap on the collision for the box collision. Now just take this and move it out of the way for now. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check to see if the character is going to be um, overlapping that box. So first thing I'm going to do is drag this out, type in branch, then from branch on true I am going to spawn the emitter. Um, it's going to be attached. You do not want to use location at attached. Okay. The emitter that you want to uh, spawn will be the particle that's spawning on the enemy or yourself. So for this one here, I'm just going to do the same thing. P underscore fire. I'm just going to pick one. I know one is bad, so if that comes out, I'll switch it. So we have this basically set up here. Down this area here, you want to just type git player um, character. And then you want to type in uh, get mesh. And for mine, let me put back on uh, my thing here. Um, I know there's a. Hmm. Let me just see if I just type the word mesh. I know, I know it's here somewhere. Uh, it's driving me nuts here. It's a real easy thing to find too. Um, let me see if I do character mesh. Okay. So even though git mesh is the thing, but git type in character mesh and you'll see git mesh. That's that's a little retarded. But okay, whatever. So you're going to take the mesh and you're going to plug it right into attached to the component. So real quick, what's happening here is once my character um, overlaps that box, that statement's going to be true. He or she is in the box. We're going to spawn the emitter. A very important thing to do is to attach the uh, point. So technically anything on your skeleton that you want. Um, for me, I find it better to use uh, the hip or the pelvis. My bone name is Pelvis, and that's very easy to get the information. Just go to your character skeleton, select which bone you want, copy and paste it, and put it right there. I know mine is the Pelvis. So here's where you can control the rotation of your, uh, your particle. So this one you're going to have to play around with. For this one, I believe it was, for me, it was negative 90, and then 90 on the Z. You can play with that, and you can play with the scale. So we're going to leave the location type and the pooling method. We're going to leave it just the way it is. Okay. So from the spawn emitter, 
you're going to drag out and you're going to cast to uh, your character. So whatever you named your character, okay? So mine, I'm just going to put BP underscore uh, character base. Mine is going to be the male character. Yours is going to be whatever it is that you named it. So from other actor here, from the begin overlap, you're going to drag it and kind of sneak it through this. And you're going to put it right into the object. Let me maybe make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So just drag it straight through there, okay? What we're going to do now is we're going to drag out our player in radius. And we are going to set it. Okay. And I'm just going to connect it here. And this statement's going to be true because our player is in the radius. He is overlapping that trigger box or that box collision. Now here's where it becomes uh, a little bit tricky for some people. So I'm going to try to um, explain this. For this to work, your character must have a health value inside of your character. It must be a float or integer, whatever you want. This one I'm using is a float value based upon health. So if you already have that set up perfectly, great, fantastic. If not, then you need to create that and then come back. That way we can tick the damage to that character. So I'm going to drag it off here and I'm going to, uh, what is it, get, mine is get health. Yeah. So I'm going to go to my current because I have it where my health is current, whether I'm at low health medium health or maximum health whatever my health is currently this is what I'm calling so it should look just like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this off here and I'm going to set oh seat wow health actually sorry don't drag it off from there drag it off of here so set health Mine's going to be set health current. Obviously, it should match here. It should match there. And I'm just going to connect those two right there. Um, you can break this line off really quick. That's fine. I just needed that for that reference. And we're going to drag out from here. And we're going to hit float minus a float. And then the top part of this will be connected right here. And I'm going to change this to uh, 0.1. This right here is going to be the, uh, I'm going to put it right here, damage per tick. Okay? So if you want more damage, change it here. So from the set health, I'm going to drag out, and I am going to go from here. And I'm going to do a less than or equal to float which should be at zero, okay? Because technically when my character dies, he's at zero, and we need to move on to the next function. So as long as the character is staying in this radius, it's going to be a 0.1 tick per damage every single time. So from the current health, um, which we set, we're going to drag out. We're going to do another branch. We'll try to keep this clean. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, cast it to our character. Since I already have it here, I'm just going to control C. Come over here, control V. Sorry about that. And I'm going to connect it to true. Okay? Now, from false, I'm going to run it right down here. And I'm going to do a delay. I'm going to do a delay for about 0.5 seconds. From the object, I'm going to drag it out here, and I'm going to do get player character. Again, I'm just going to tuck that right there. So if you do not have an animation state for death that you can call upon, okay, you can just simply drag from here and just put destroy actor. Okay, um, actually, it's going to have to be. Yeah, I believe, uh, no, it's going to have to be called to, I believe it's going to have to be called to your, uh, no, nope, destroy actor should be fine, I believe so. Not 100% sure, because I have a um, animation state, so I'm going to see what's going on with that one. 
So I'll do that there for you guys. Like for me, if I have an animation state minus player died, it, it calls upon the function inside of my character with the animation. So I'm going to do that there. So that's technically done there. Coming down to the uh, delay, we are going to branch it out again. Gonna branch, and if um, we're gonna, I'm sorry, we're gonna drag the player in radius. We're just gonna connect it right here, okay? And then we're gonna go from the set health right here, and we're gonna loop it all the way to true. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean that up. I'm gonna double tap my line, bring it down kind of make it a little bit better because right now that looks like shit just gonna leave it there okay so quick recap alright so once the player steps into the box which is gonna be a true statement which we have it toggled as true okay we are going to um, spawn the fire and we're attaching it to our pelvis that particle system is going to be cast to your character the player um, is in range, uh, in radius, sorry, that's why it's set to true. We are going to start ticking our health, and that's going to start affecting our um, current health. And if it goes down to zero, it's going to start to kill us. And I forgot one thing right here, this has got to be connected to the branch. So from health, less than or equal to, that statement's going to be connected right there. From true, if we're at zero, it's going to cast through our character, which we're going to destroy the actor, or call the function of your death from inside your character, get the player character on false, run the delay, run the branch to check, and it's going to check this right here. Perfect. Now, on the begin, I'm sorry, on the begin and overlap. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, since I already have it here, Control copy. I'm just going to paste it down here, okay? I'm going to zoom in, connect, and other actor will go to object. And then we are going to set is the player in radius. We're going to check it out right here. We are going to leave this statement just the way it is, okay? From here, we're going to do a delay, and I'm going to explain this once it is. I'm done. This delay right here is how long the particle system will stay on your character even when you are away from it. So I'm just going to put it here. Time to deact uh, from radius. Okay. So two seconds. So technically, once my character walks out of that area, in two seconds that fire is going to go off of them. Now you could flirt and change this as much as you would like to. Now from the return value of the spawn emitter um, attached, you're going to go from the return value and you are going to type the word detach from component. So once it's completed you should see the fire go away. All we're going to do is compile. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. The target, which is my fault, just connect um, the character on the first, right after spawn emitter, the character, I forgot to drag a line right here. And then we should be good to go. So here's my test fire. I'm going to put it right here. You can adjust the box as much as you would like. So I'm going to make the box a little bit bigger. Okay. So right there. So I'm just going to play. Go onto the screen here. And the moment I walk into it, I should be on fire, taking damage. I'm walking away. I'm still on fire. Two seconds, it goes away. Now, there is a thing that I did not figure out yet. I, I will figure it out, so if anybody else knows the way. When my character dies and he still has the fire on him, 
the fire still stays. So I'm trying to figure that out. But right now, I walk in. I'm on fire. Two seconds. Gone. See, now if I stay there and I die, I just destroyed the actor. I did not call my, um, my respawn. So that's how yours would look if you do not have the death animation or the respawn set up in your blueprint. So, let's see what the errors are. Yes, that's because I hit destroyed actor. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so, if I go here to mine really quick, I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to call uh, my function player died. Then I'll show you the way it will look. Really quick. So if anybody has a little way to fix this, let me know. That would be great. So I'm going to walk in here. La, 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 la. I'm on fire. And then when I'm standing in the fire, I'm going to die. See, but then I spawn, and I'm still on fire. Unless I reactivate it from something else, then it kind of will negate it. Or for this case, no, I'm just going to stay on fire. So, I got that far. I got some fixing to do. Once I actually get that fix where it doesn't s respawn when I die, that, that'd that be great. So, if anybody knows another way to do that, please let me know and let everybody else know. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, comments, please let me know. Other than that, have a great day.